Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't touch that dial. Listen to Blondie. Before we join the bumsteads of Shady Lane Avenue, let's gather around the bandstand for a curtain raiser from Lisa Adrian. Raise that curtain, Lisa. Jada, 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 Jing, Jing, Jing. Jada, 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 Jing, Jing, Jing. you, Lisa. You know, folks, these days it's hard to find good, quality, affordable entertainment that the whole family will enjoy. Life goes by fast, and the money can roll out faster than life. Well, look no further, friends. Blondie is being produced and sponsored this week by your very own Watertown Players. The Watertown Players has been around for over 30 years, producing well-known quality entertainment at extremely affordable prices. You may have seen such wonders as Guys and Dolls, Love Letters, Mama Won't Fly, Wicked Watertown, and The Music Man Jr., just to name a few. The Watertown Players makes its home at 210 South Water Street in the market, right here in downtown Watertown. Stay tuned to hear about the next production in the works during our next commercial break. The Watertown Players, dedicated to enriching the lives of those in this and surrounding communities through creativity, expression, and fun. And now for our weekly visit with the Bumsteads. It is Halloween. The witches are polishing their broomsticks and the hobgoblins are preparing to spend the night hobbling and gobbling. Blondie and Baby Dumpling have turned out the lights in the house and are waiting in ambush for Dagwood to return from the office. I don't see Daddy coming up the street yet, Mommy. Well, he'll be along any minute now. I guess he'll be surprised when he doesn't see any lights in the house, won't he? I think so, Baby Dumpling. Will Daddy be scared when we yell at him? I don't know, dear, but I imagine he will be. Mommy? What is it? Do all the witches in the world ride through the air on broomsticks on Halloween? Well, some people say they do. The sky is just full of them, huh? That's what they say. I wonder who directs all the traffic. Probably the man in the moon. Gee, Mommy, you know all the answers, don't you? Some of them, dear, but not all. Will Daddy take us out Halloweening tonight? Yes, I think so, for a little while. But what if when he comes in, we scare him away and he never comes back again? Maybe, huh? That's not very likely. He'd come back. I guess he'd get hungry, wouldn't he? <laughs> you know your father pretty well, dear. Oh, look, he's coming up the street now. <laughs> Gee, well, we scare him. Get by the door, Mommy. All right, Baby Dumpling. Do you think we ought to yell at him? Just as soon as he calls for you. Here he comes up the steps. Get ready. Don't forget, Mommy. Give a good holler. Shh. Oh, blah! That's funny. The house is dark. I wonder where everyone is. Oh, Blondie! Blue! Blue! Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
<laughs> he ran away, mommy. <laughs> Baby Dumpling, I think you gave him a good preview of Halloween. Will he come back, mommy? Why, of course. Let's turn the lights on now and give him a good welcome. Blondie? <laughs> Hello, Dagwood. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Stop laughing at me like that. I scared Daddy. I scared Daddy. I scared Daddy. You did not. I did so. You did not. I did so. Now stop playing games with me. I really wasn't scared. Then why did you run away, Dagwood? Well, I... Well, you see... Oh, Blondie, stop cross-examining me. I was just startled. That's I all. scared Daddy. All I want to know is what's the big idea? It's a fine way to greet a man coming home from a hard day at the office with his wife and child standing inside the door and yell at him. You'd think I wasn't wanted around here. Now, darling, you know better than that. Sure, we love you, Daddy. It's just Halloween, that's all. Halloween? Oh, yeah. I forgot all about it. So that's why you were trying to scare me. Sure, Daddy. And will you and Mommy take me out Halloweening tonight? I told Baby we'd take him out for a while, Dagwood. Gee, Blondie, I don't think we can. We've got to, well, sort of entertain Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller? Who's he? One of Mr. Dither's... Best prospects. He's going to build a bunch of little houses just outside of town. He's got a lot of money, and he doesn't seem to like anybody or anything. But outside of that, I guess he's all right. He sounds awful, Daddy. How can we entertain a man like that? He's used to having people spend a lot of money on him. I don't know, Blondie, but we've got to keep him in a pleasant frame of mind tonight so Mr. Dithers can close the deal with him tomorrow. When is he coming here, Dagwood? In about an hour, Blondie. Is that too soon? Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference. We'll just have to do our best to give him a good time when he gets here. That sounds like Mr. Miller now. I don't like the way he rings our doorbell. Well, he is the persistent type. Hello, Miss. Hey, there's nobody here. Well, somebody must have... Oh, I see what it is, Dagwood. One of the children in the neighborhood stuck a pin in the doorbell. Look. Hmm, a Halloween trick, eh? I wish Mr. Miller weren't coming tonight. I'd show these kids a few tricks myself. Dagwood, haven't you any idea what we could do to amuse Mr. Miller? Well, maybe he'd like to go to a movie. Why don't you call up and see what's showing at the Jewel? I met the manager while I was walking home. They have a Donald Duck, a newsreel, two shorts, bank night, and a silly symphony. What's the feature picture? He wouldn't tell me. Oh, that sounds bad. I asked him whether it was an A or a B picture, and he said, think of the first letter of zebra. Aha, there's that kid again. I'll get him. Dagwood, that may be Mr. Miller. Oh, no, it isn't. Get away from that door and let me answer it. Oh, hello. Are you Mrs. Bumstead? Yes, I am. I'm Mr. Miller. Mr. Dithers insisted I come over here. Come right in. Yes, come in, Mr. Miller. Thank you. I... Ouch! Who threw that at me? What was that? It looks like corn. I guess it was some of the children in the neighborhood, Mr. Miller. They're Halloweening tonight. The young whippersnappers! Why don't their families keep them at home where they belong? Let me take your coat, Mr. Miller. No, thanks. I'll keep it on. I don't expect to stay that long. Would you like to go to a movie, Mr. Miller? No. I don't like movies. I see. Well, why don't you sit down here, please? Very well. What in the name of heaven is that? I guess it's the kids Halloweening again, Mr. Miller. They're sticking pins in the doorbells. Childish, isn't it? Very. What would you like to do this evening, Mr. Miller? I don't know, but I certainly don't want to be tormented by young devils all night. This Halloween nonsense, it's ridiculous. What? Again? I'll see who it is. Just a minute, Mr. Miller. 
Now, Dagwood, don't you chase any of those children. They're having a good time. Hello, Daddy. Oh, it's you, Baby Dumpling. Mr. Miller, this is our son, Baby Dumpling. Hmm. Same to you. That's no way to talk to a guest, Baby Dumpling. What do you say to Mr. Miller? Goodbye. The child obviously doesn't like me. What have you been doing outside, dear? Oh, having fun, Mommy. Why did you come in then? I ran out of pins. Have you been sticking pins in our doorbell? I cannot tell a lie, Daddy. Yes, I have. Well, telling the truth is a very fine virtue. But don't let me catch you sticking pins in our doorbell again. All right, Daddy. That's better. But it, it's all right if I keep on throwing corn, isn't it? Throwing corn? Did you hit me with that corn? In the neck? Yes, in the neck. That was me. Ah, the idea. That certainly doesn't show much training. Well, you see, Mr. Miller... Just a minute, Dagwood. Mr. Miller, you haven't any right to talk that way about Baby Dumpling. Do you think what he did was all right? I certainly do. Blondie, remember what Mr. Dithers said. I don't care what anyone said. Tonight is Halloween, and if Baby Dumpling wants to go out and have a little innocent fun, I don't see why he shouldn't. You tell him, Mommy. He didn't hurt you, did he, Mr. Miller? Well, no, but... Then you've no right to get angry about it. Didn't you ever go Halloweening when you were a boy? Well, well, yes, I, I suppose I did. And didn't you have a good time? It's been a long time ago, and I don't remember it very well. Don't you remember the good old days, Mr. Miller? Didn't you ever go out and steal garbage cans? Well, maybe I did. Mr. Miller, I'll tell you what we're going to do to entertain you. We're going to take you out Halloweening with us. What? What? Why, that's silly. You can take your choice, Mr. Miller. We can stay here and have the doorbell ringing all evening, or we can go out and stick pins in some of those doorbells ourselves. Now, which would you rather do? It's not much of a choice. I'll go with you, uh, but I don't think I'll enjoy it. Well, what are we going to do here? This is Mr. Brown's house, isn't it, Daddy? Yeah, we'll start working on him first. I don't know, Dagwood. Mr. Brown's very clever with tools, and he's probably all ready and waiting for someone to come along. Well, he's not too clever for me. Daddy, let me go. I'll throw some corn at his windows. That's child's play. Well, I'm a child. Uh-huh, that's right. You are. Well, do we just stand here, Bumstead? What are you going to do? I'm going to sneak up onto his porch and tip over that porch swing. Don't you think that'll be a laugh? No, what's funny about it? Gee, Mr. Miller, don't be such a sourpuss. Well, I still don't. The idea, sourpuss indeed. Well, hurry up, Dagwood, and be careful. Okay, just keep an eye on me. This is the most ridiculous thing I've heard of. I want to go along with Daddy. You stay right here, dear. You can't tell what's going to happen. Is something awful going to happen, Mommy? Well, baby, where your father's concerned, something usually does. Well, uh, he's up on the porch now. He's waving at us. Hurry up, Daddy! I guess he's going to tip over that porch swing now. This was supposed to be funny. I don't see anything halfway amusing about it at all. The whole thing is silly. It's, it's a waste of time. Ah! Oh, my goodness. Mommy, what's happening to Daddy? Help! Let go of me! Help! Bonnie! Look! Look there with the porch swing. He's coming down off the porch, Mommy. I'm not sure the porch isn't coming down on him. <laughs> Look, he tripped on something. <laughs> Help, Blondie. Here he comes, Mommy. <laughs> That's a scream. Look at him. It's an outrage. What happened, Dagwood? Well, everything was all right until I touched the porch swing. 
Then I got an electric shock and the whole thing collapsed on my toes. When I ran down the steps, I tripped over a wire that had tin cans tied to it. What a dirty trick. A fine sense of humor Brown has. It's not fair. Just like old days, Daddy. Stop making fun of me. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever saw. You should have seen how you jumped when you got that shock. I thought you were going through the porch roof. <laughs> What's funny about that? It wasn't funny to me. So, Brown wasn't too clever for you, eh? <laughs> it's a dirty trick. That's a fine way for him to spend Halloween, taking advantage of other people, darn near electrocuting them. That man's a menace. I ought to call the police. Don't forget, Dagwood, you were warned before you started up on that porch. It's disgraceful. Well, Mr. Miller, what would you like to do now? I'd like to see you go up there and do that over again. <laughs> I thought you weren't going to enjoy this. I've changed my mind. I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> That's fine. But I don't know how long I can stand this kind of treatment. Say, this is a likely looking house, Bumstead. Who lives here? I don't know. I did know whose house this was, but I can't remember just now. I know about him, Mommy. All summer, when we kids are playing ball in that vacant lot over there, he takes all the balls that go onto his grass. What does he do with them? I heard he burns them in the winter instead of coal. Hmm, that kind of man. This is just the place for us to start work, eh, Bumstead? <laughs> Whatever you say, Mr. Miller. Oh, just call me A.G. All right, A.G. Well, what are you three children going to do? Well, why don't we... Children, eh? <laughs> well, Mrs. Bumstead, tonight I won't argue the point. I've got it, Bumstead. What's that, uh, A.G.? <laughs> you see that lattice? That lattice work that goes up the side of that porch to the porch roof? Now be careful what you suggest, Mr. Miller. Oh, this'll be great. That porch roof is nice and flat. We could climb up there easily. Then we could lean over and throw some of this corn your son has against the front door. <laughs> I get it, A.G. And when the man comes to the door, we'll let him have it. Oh, of course. And you'll never guess we're peppering him from his own roof. Dagwood, I don't think you and Mr. Miller ought to try that. It sounds dangerous to me. Why, there'll be nothing to it. Sure, Blondie. I want to go along, too. Oh, no, you don't, young man. You'd better stay right here with me. We'll watch from behind a tree. But I'm not having any fun. Daddy and Mr. Miller are doing everything. Well, you'll just have to stay here. This is an outrage. Uh-huh. <laughs> he certainly picks things up from you, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, baby, you can come with us as far as the lattice by the porch. Okay, Daddy, but sometimes I think being a little boy is a hard life. Let's go, Bumstead. You be careful, you two. Don't get into anything you can't get out of. We won't. I'll be watching you from here. Come on, Baby Dumpling, and keep down low so we won't be seen when we sneak up to the porch. Okay, Daddy. This is going to be great, Bumstead. Now, look out for these bushes here. I guess he didn't see us. Is that ladder strong enough to hold us, A.G.? Sure. Watch me. I can climb up it just like a ladder. Gee, Daddy, you have all the fun. Why can't I climb up, too? You couldn't do it, baby. Oh, yes, I could. Well, you watch me. I'm going up to the roof now. Let me have that bag of corn. All right, Daddy. Here it is. Come on up, Bumstead. I'm coming up now. Here, <laughs> give me your hand. Just take the corn. I've got it. Come on. Thanks. I'm up now. Fine. Now, let's slide over to the front edge of the roof and then throw this corn at his door. I'm right with you, A.G. Bumstead, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this evening. I'm having a wonderful time. That's good, A.G. Well, you all ready? <laughs> you bet. Here goes. Good shot. That'll bring him out. You know, I used to pitch on the... Hey, 
There goes the porch light on. Grab a handful of this corn, and when he comes out, we'll let him have it. There he is. One, two, three. Ouch! Who threw that? I know where you are. Come up from those bushes. <laughs> he doesn't know where we are. Let's give him the other barrel. Okay, A.G. Ouch! Come up from those bushes. I saw you, you young scamps. Say, maybe he'll catch Baby Dumpling. He's hiding in the bushes right by the porch. No, I'm not, Daddy. I'm right up here with you. Oh, that's good. I was a... Huh? How did you get up here? It wasn't hard. I just watched you like you told me. Oh, my gosh. Shh. Aha! I heard you. So you youngsters are up on the porch roof, eh? No, we're not. We're still in the bushes. You can't fool me. Well, I've caught you this time, and you're not going to get away again. I'll fix this lattice so you can't climb down again. We're caught. What's he going to do? I don't know. Gee, Daddy, we sure are having a swell time. Hey, he's tearing the lattice down. We're, we're stuck up here. <laughs> How do you like that, you young rascals? Now what are you going to do? <laughs> I've got you, haven't I? Not yet, you haven't. Well, I will in a minute. I'm coming up there to settle with all of you right away. Holy smoke! He's coming up inside the house, and he'll probably come out after us from one of these second-floor windows. This is just like the good old days, isn't it, Daddy? Baby Dumpling, what did you come up here for? I thought it would be fun, and it is, too! Too? Bum said, how are we going to get down from here? I don't know, A.G. This is terrible. What's everyone going to think if they hear of this? A, a man of my position and responsibilities caught in a ridiculous position like this? But it was your idea, A.G. Yes, but you lured me on. And, and don't call me A.G. To Blondie! Yes, Dagwood? Baby Dumpling's up here. Hello, Mommy. Look at me. I climbed up all by myself. Oh, good heavens. You come right down here this minute. He can't. The man took the lattice down. I won't let him get me, Mommy. Don't worry about Daddy, either. I'll take care of him. You be careful. Blondie, what are we going to do? Dagwood, I haven't any idea. Oh, I just remembered whose house this is. It's Judge Cratchit. Great Scott, you mean... This is a judge's house? I guess so, Mr. Miller. Oh, that's just dandy. That's a fine way to entertain a client. A former client of the Dithers Company. You got me into this mess. Now, how are you going to get me out? I suppose it would be silly to suggest a parachute? It certainly would. I see what you mean. Maybe if we climbed up to the top roof, Judge Crotchet would think we got down somehow. The roof is sort of sloping, but it looks dangerous. It's not dangerous, Daddy. Bumstead, look! That child of yours is sitting astraddle the top of the house. Ooh. How did he get up there? There must be acrobats dangling from your family tree. I don't know. I had a great aunt who ran away with the circus. Come up here, Daddy. You can see all over town. All right, baby. I'm coming up after you. Well, I'm not going to stay here alone and face that judge what's-his-name. I'm coming along, too. You'd better stay here, Mr. Miller. Nothing doing. And remember, Bumstead, if anything happens to me, an innocent man's blood will be on your hands. Gee, Daddy, <laughs> this is the best Halloween I've ever had. Look out, Bumstead. Take it easy. Don't push me. Well, be careful. I'm all right. Don't worry about me. What made you think I was? Come on, Daddy. It's not much further. I got up without touching my hands. Dagwood, where are you? We're way up here on top of this roof. You get Baby Dumpling and bring him down right now. I'm trying to, honey. Hello, Mr. Miller. Are you having a good time? If I'm able to speak when I get down, I'll tell you. Whenever Daddy takes me anywhere, I always have a lot of fun. Hmm, you'll probably grow up to be a steeplejack. Look, Daddy. You can see all the lights all over. Isn't it sweat up here? Stop admiring the view. This is no joking matter. Bumstead, what's going to happen to us? Well, we're on top of the house. 
I don't know where we can go from here. I do, but I don't like to think about it. Here comes that judge. I heard a window open. Where are you? I know you couldn't get down. I'll bet you can't get us. Ah, so there you are, up on the ridge pole, eh? Sure. We just climbed right up here. So I see. <laughs> Two of you look like pretty big children. We're very tall for our age. Well, what's this you left on my porch roof? Hmm? It's a sack of corn. Well, what do you know about that? Now wait a minute, Your Honor. Yeah, don't do anything rash. Well, you certainly enjoyed yourself throwing corn at me. I wonder how you'd like it. Hey, Your Honor! Ouch! Take it easy, Your Honor! Ha <laughs> ha! You missed me! Are you gonna come down from there? All of you? No, we won't surrender! Let's be reasonable about this, Your Honor. You've got us at a disadvantage. Well, are you going to come down, or shall I go back in the house and lock the windows and leave you up there like three weather vanes? I guess we'll come down. It's getting cold. I'm not cold, Daddy. We'll come down, Your Honor. That's better. And I think I'll just hold court in my living room and try you right in this house. Blondie! Oh, Blondie! This episode of Blondie is being produced and sponsored by the Watertown Players. The holiday season is just around the corner and will be here before you know it. The Watertown Players have two great ways to celebrate. First in November, a Wizard of Oz Christmas, the annual Christmas play at the Octagon House Museum located at 919 Charles Street here in Watertown. Then in December, the Watertown Players Youth Theater will be presenting Elf the Musical Junior in pre-recorded virtual form. This hilarious fish-out-of-water comedy follows Buddy the Elf in his quest to find his true identity and to help all those around him remember the true meaning of Christmas. Elf the Musical Junior will be released on December 11th to the world. For further information on the Watertown Players, please follow the group on Facebook. The Watertown Players, dedicated to enriching the lives of those in this and surrounding communities through creativity, expression, and fun. This special session of my court will now come to order. What are your names, please? Your Honor, I'm A.G. Miller, but, but I'd like to talk this th uh, Order, please. And your name? Er, uh, me? Oh, uh, it's Dagwood Bumstead. I'm Baby Dumpling Bumstead. What's your name? <coughs> it's um, Judge Crotchet. Now, young lady, you will have to act a lawyer for these, these three boys. All right, Your Honor. I'm Mrs. Bumstead. Mrs. Hmm, that brings up a legal difficulty, but we'll dispense with it. Now, these three children are charged with trespassing on my property, particularly these two in long trousers. Have you anything to say in their defense? Yes, I have, Your Honor. You tell him, Mommy. Silence in the court. Proceed, Mrs. Bomstead. Well, Your Honor... I think you'll agree with me that Halloween is almost as important a night to children as Christmas Eve. Admitted. Of course, they did overstep a bit in climbing up on your roof, but I think their enthusiasm can be excused. You probably did some strange things on Halloween yourself when you were a boy. Hmm, I seem to remember tying a cow to the school bell rope. But let's get on with the case. Well, Your Honor... I would like to charge these two grown boys with taking most of the Halloween fun for themselves when it rightfully belonged to the third defendant, Baby Dumpling Bumstead. That's me. Ever since we started out, they've been mainly interested in amusing themselves, Your Honor. I object. Overruled. Mm, this is a serious charge. 
I think you should impose the maximum sentence the law allows. I still object. You're still overruled. You try it, Mr. Miller. No, thanks. This doesn't seem to be a good court for objections. There's one more thing, Your Honor. Perhaps I shouldn't bring this up, but I've heard rumors about you and what happens to the baseballs that go in your backyard. That's right, Blondie. The judge takes all the Texas leaguers. Yes. What has he got to say about that? Well, there is an explanation. That vacant lot is littered with broken glass, and I've been afraid something would happen to some of the neighborhood boys. So I've tried to discourage ball playing there. I guess it's given me a rather disagreeable reputation. Well, I think that can be fixed, Your Honor. Mr. Bumstead works for the J.C. Dithers Company, and I'm quite sure they'd be glad to help clean out the glass from the empty lot. Oh, sure, Blondie. I'll write a memo to Mr. Dithers in the morning. <clears throat> Speaking as a client of the J.C. Dithers Company, I'll be willing to pay half the cost of fixing the lot up. Gee, thanks, Mr. Miller. Oh, that's all right, Baby Dumpling. Just call me B.D. And you can call me A.G. Well, there still is the matter of the sentence. I'll fine each of you ten dollars in costs. Ten dollars? Two. But I'll suspend the sentence. Now let's adjourn to the kitchen for some cider and donuts. We'll have a real Halloween. Cider and donuts? Come on, Your Honor. Let's go. Well, home again, Blondie. It was a swell Halloween, Daddy. I had lots of fun. You had lots of cider and donuts, too. And you'd better run right upstairs and go to bed. Okay, Mommy. It certainly was nice of Judge Crotchet to give us the cider and donuts, wasn't it? Yeah, he's all right. I wouldn't be surprised if next summer he's playing third base on one of the kids' baseball teams. I guess Mr. Miller had a good time, too. He seemed to be very amused about something when he left us at the corner. Oh, there's that doorbell. I guess some of the Halloweeners are still out. I'll get it, Dagwood. Okay, honey. <laughs> a pin in the doorbell, huh? Did you see who put it there? Well, I saw someone running away. I couldn't be sure, Dagwood but it looked very much like Mr. Miller. And so we leave Blondie and Dagwood of Shady Lane Avenue. We invite you to listen again next week when we join the Bumsteads once more. Next week's episode is entitled Anchors and Sheep Dip. <laughs> Sounds like a hoot and a half to me. This week's episode, The Bumsteads Go Halloweening, Feature the voice talents of Tara Jones as Baby Dumpling, Matt Emerson as Mr. Miller, Greg Coots as Judge Crotchet, Blaine Landowski as Dagwood, and of course, Lisa Steffel as Blondie. This week's episode was brought to you by the Watertown Players. Don't forget these fine upcoming productions. A Wizard of Oz Christmas, the annual Christmas play being presented at the Octagon House Museum, and Elf the Musical Junior, being presented virtually in December. For further information, follow the Watertown Players on Facebook. This is your announcer, Jim Steffel, thanking you for supporting the Watertown Players and our weekly episodes of Blondie. For more information on how you can help fund these fine, old-fashioned productions, please text BLONDIE to 44321. That's BLONDIE, B-L-O-N-D-I-E, to 44321. Thank you and good night.